Hi, Travis. You guys get it?
he's a professional cowboy. You, I know. I'm sorry. videos and I'm more than willing to do that and serve in that capacity. So let's just jump right into it. First off, there is a ladies retreat in Granbury on September 22nd and 23rd. The cost is $25 and they need to know as soon as possible if you are attending. I believe the contact point for that is Katie Burton. Now I don't know anything about this firsthand, but secondhand I've heard it is an amazing experience. If you've never been, find someone who has been before, ask them a few questions. Just get with them as soon as possible. Today I believe would really be the best opportunity for you to do that so that they can kind of get an idea of how much food they need, okay? Definitely, please, if you have the opportunity, check it out. Next up, September 24th here in Glenrose at Rivers Church in the evening after the ladies retreat, we will be having a barbecue. That is right. The church will be providing the meat. The church will be providing the beans. You bring your beautiful, sparkling personality and yourself, maybe a guest, and definitely, if possible, bring a side, a dessert, maybe some beverages, something along those lines, just to kind of help out a little bit, okay? Invite someone who has never been to church here before, because this is Texas, y'all. Somebody may not come to church on Sunday mornings, but Sunday evening, if they hear there's food, they are ready to go, okay? We all know this. We are all guilty of showing up for the food and skipping the actual sustenance. So please, if you get the opportunity, invite somebody to come, okay? There's a lot of people out there who normally would not come to church, but through things like this, have managed to get involved in communities and they really grow. It's how we reach people, okay? So please, please, I'm begging you, find somebody, invite them, bring a side, bring a dessert. Thank you so much. I hope that you guys have a great day. This Wednesday, there will be a kids' prayer service, or no, a kids' night and a prayer service happening at the same time. This Wednesday here at 6.30, the prayer service will be in this building. The kids' service will be over in the kids' building. There you go. That's all the announcements. Um, good morning, church. How are y'all today? Good. Awesome. I don't think there's anybody better to do those announcements than Corey. I'm just going to throw that out there. He just, like, blasts through it and then just... I don't know, he gets us all pumped up in the morning, which I think is amazing. So, uh, if you guys don't mind standing, we're going to go to the Father in prayer before we start our worship today, okay? All right, let's go to prayer. Father God, we love you. We are just so honored and so thankful that you are in all of our lives and that you make your presence known in, in all of our lives in, your, in our own special way. Um, and we are just forever, forever grateful 
of all the things that you're doing in our lives. Um, we're thankful that we can come together as children of God, Lord, on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning to honor and serve and worship you. Um, let the, this, let, let your presence be known, Lord, today. It's in your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Yeah. 
your love The way you have to wait It crashes over me crashes over me Cause you are for us You are not against us Champion of heaven You made a way for all to enter in The Bible says that Perfect love of God cast out all fear. You believe that? Yes. Sing this out this morning.
to 
that, that never give up on that call is just amazing. So next month, October, is going to be our Missions Emphasis Month. And she's going to be able to come and show us pictures uh, of, her, of her journey there this time and, I'm, and what she's planning on doing when she goes back. And, and when she does go back, we're going to support her. All right. Yeah. yeah. We just, that's that's how we do. If we have to sell plasma <laughs> or have a garage sale out front every week, we're going to take care of our own going to Uganda, aren't we? Yes. Man, I, what, if, you're, if you don't follow me on Facebook, it's uh, Big Stud 71. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, that's probably somebody. Don't follow them. <laughs> yeah. But it's uh, Chris Kids, and if you get it's Rivers, <laughs> it's Rivers Church slash Glenroe Baptist Church on Facebook. If you want to follow us there, we usually put some of those pictures up there. We are continuing with our series, "Who Do You Think You Are?" and the baseline of that is when you know who you are, you know what to do, right? Have you ever just been frustrated wanting to do something and not knowing what to do? I think there are a lot of Christ followers that way. You feel the need to accept Christ, you accept Christ, and then you're like, now what? Well, I can't do this because I don't know the Bible. Well, I can't do this because I haven't been <laughs> trained properly. Well, there's certain things that are just, when you know who you are, you know what to do. I've heard it said this way. Bloom where you're planted. Grow where, grow where you're at. Our whole theme this year for 2017 has been to level up. You, we haven't talked about that lately, but we're, as Christ followers, we're to level up. If you're playing video games, like my wife was addicted to Mario years ago. Sorry, dude, she was. It was like we had to break the Nintendo so we could talk to her. <laughs> I just need three more coins. <laughs> but you want to go to the next level, right? That's how, as a Christ follower, we want to always be progressing. Around here, and it's not original with us, but we say three things, don't we? That, that found people do what? Find people. Find people. If you know the Lord, our job is pretty simple. Let's introduce people that don't know Him to Him. Save people do what? Serve. They serve people. If we know the Lord, there's something for us to do. Now, it's going to look different for everybody. What you're going to do is not what I'm going to do, but collectively we get things done. Right? Corey did an excellent job with those videos. Amen. Uh, yes. That is not my thing. So try to find something that is our fit, try. If you don't find the perfect fit, try something, then try something else. You know, if, we're done, if there's something that God's calling you to do that we're not doing as a church, let us know. Then we got your back. But we're not, we're meant to serve. And growing people do what? Change. Change. If, if you're a Christ follower, you're to, to be growing. Stagnant ponds have no life in them, do they? You ever been around a stagnant pond? It got that little glaze on there? You know what I'm talking about? You're not, you're not putting a worm, wasting a worm on a stagnant pond, are you? We don't want to be stagnant. That's why we, part of the reason why we changed our name from Glen Rose Baptist to the rivers. We want to be a river of God's love to our community. To where when things flow in, it needs to flow back out. And so all that relates to what we're talking about. When you know who you are, you know what to do. We put a lot of pressure on ourselves, and the devil psychs us out a lot, doesn't he? You're not good enough. You've had this in your past. Why would anyone want to listen to you? Who do you think you are? Right? We play that game in our head. Well, here's what I am. I am an ambassador. Remember that one? I, an ambassador goes out and tells people. They, they speak for God. I, I'm a child of God. That's who I am. And today we are going to be talking about we are salt and we are light. 
you have your Bibles, open them up to uh, Matthew. I do believe, no, Luke. Sorry, that was just a test to see if you were ready. Luke chapter 5, verses 31 and 32. I love this big print Bible. It is awesome. I think it would probably be the size of those guys like on the sidelines with the pictures of stuff calling in plays like, and I would still get stuff from. So, uh, all right. What did I say? 531 32. I'm getting there, I promise. All right. Jesus answered them Healthy people don't need to see a doctor, sick people do. I have come not to call those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners and need to repent. If you are looking for a perfect church, you will not find it. If you are looking for a church of perfect people that does not exist, our church exists for hurting people. We're all hurting in some way or another, aren't we? We're all broken some way or another. In the Bible it says, clean stalls aren't being used right. That's the Christian version of that, but right? Stalls are full of <coughs> things that are in stalls. Horse stalls. Because I am a cowboy. <laughs> I rode a horse two weeks ago and I'm converting to full cowboy. <laughs> Yeah, I am. Oh, I did that just for ten. Oh, yeah, I am. But we are. There's going to, whenever there's. A, let me say say it this way. I remember, and you've heard me say it when I was a youth counselor. We were picking up a lot of rough kids in Adam, picking them up on the bus. And we were running. A lot. And we got a lot of kids that were, here's, here, here's what happened one night. Lonnie Lerman, the pastor of Granbury, was the youth pastor. And he came up and he said, hey, a couple of these kids that are called the Colossal Brothers. You remember them, Kelly? The, they were twin brothers and they were pretty rough and they were in a gang. He said, they did. They said some stuff. I told people they were going to be at church. And then they said they were going to come by and shoot up the church. And so... I'm going to have all the kids sit on the floor and don't tell them why. <laughs> to keep them away from the window. Uh, okay. And then that's the kind of crowd we had. Right? And then one night we got a letter, an anonymous letter from someone saying, it looks like those kids over there are just a bunch of unsafe kids. This is a church. Yes, it is. And we were like, yes. <laughs> because what's this verse say? Sick people, healthy people don't need a doctor, do they? That's why we exist, isn't it? Amen. We're a triage for hurting people. Whether they attend our church or not, we're to minister to anybody. We're to be the salt and the light. If you're taking notes, you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, and we'll cruise on. It's just a couple more over. So when you know who you are, you know what to do if we're salt and light. That's pretty basic things, isn't it? Someone just serious? <laughs> uh, <laughs> got my hearing aid going on. <laughs> I used to love to sit next to my father-in-law in places and make his hearing aid go off. Or just go sit next to him and go. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? What good is it to have a stupid son-in-law if you can't let him tease you? 
Let's go to the Lord in prayer before we go any further. Father, we love you. God, we seek to worship you as we did through song, through the opening of your word now. Father, for those that that want to be with us that can't be today, Lord, I think of Richard Carroll has an eye infection and Denver's sick today. And Father, for those serving our country that can't be here, I think of Melissa and, and Luke and Sam as they're scattered across the country. Father, I pray for those that on the other side of the world, I think of Sarah and Uganda and Esteban spreading the word and, and Uruguay. Father, I pray for all of our church family, whether they're in here today or not, that, that you just speak to them. Father, help us as we dive into your word today. Help us just not take it in, but help us live it out. So, Father, we, we want to turn this service again over to you and, and let your Holy Spirit have liberty in this place. And we ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. 513 says, You are the salt of the earth. But what good is the salt if it loses its flavor? Can you make, that, make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as, as worthless. 14, we'll go ahead and go there. You are the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, they light a lamp and place it on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see that everyone will praise the Heavenly Father. We are salt and light. When this was being written, this is... Uh, Jesus speaking the Sermon on the Mount and he's saying he's a, the best teacher ever that's ever lived, one of the best communicator he uses the word you're salt, you're the salt of the earth well salt was pretty important in fact salt was did everything at that time they didn't have refrigerators, did they? They used salt. In fact, people in Roman times got paid with salt. How'd you like that? Just an outage just coming out, putting in some pie and a half. What would you do if you showed up and they gave you salt? Uh, take it to the store. I'm going to trade you this bag of salt for some salt. <laughs> that's, that's what I do. Yeah, because I'm not that bright. <laughs> this is sea salt. Right? It was, it was that important. So let's just look at what salt does. Number one, salt per preserves. Salt preserves. It keeps things. The Lord Jesus Christ wants to keep us. He promises us that know Him, eternity with Him. That's preserved, isn't it? He says, you're the salt of the earth. You're to help preserve people's eternity. That's a big deal, isn't it? We are to help preserve people's eternity. Found people, find people. Don't let that overwhelm you, though. God doesn't expect you to save the whole world. I remember as a kid, I went to a pretty, <coughs> what you call it, strict, strict church. I wore, yeah, good work, conservative, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was going to say jacked up. But <laughs> <laughs> you guys can't just, no, they loved me. But the culture there in the 1980s was a little bit different than the culture we have now. And I remember even going to play basketball in junior high at a youth activity, and I was wearing shorts to play basketball, and they were going to send me home. And I didn't know the Lord. I thought, you people are whack. We can go. <laughs> but 
at that same time, they were hustling. I've met Jesus there. So there's a balance, isn't there? We're not meant to save the whole world. We can only do what we can do. God doesn't expect us. But they would tell me things like, if you don't tell people about Jesus, their blood's on your hands. <laughs> and it freaked me out. To, have you ever been freaked out with so much responsibility that you just choke and don't know what to do? So he's like, I'm not even going to try that. I'll just pretend I didn't know that rule. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's the way to live right there. <laughs> oh, that's frowned upon? My bad. That's not, that, God tells us that we're to reach people. I heard it this way, uh, the guy walking along the, the seashore and there's all these starfish that are on the beach. Have you heard this? And frantically starts grabbing starfish, throwing them back in the water so they don't dry up and die. And someone says, you're not going to be able to get all these starfish back in the water. He says, yeah, but I can get this one. But I can get this one but I can get this one. Amen. And that's what we're to do with our life. We're to preserve people's eternity. If God puts someone in your path, you should rub off on them. Just like that Cheerios commercial. Remember the Cheerios commercial a few years ago where the, the guy lowered his cholesterol? Everybody remember that? They went down five points and everywhere he went, he said, like he was at a car at a stoplight and he rolled his window down. Hey, I lowered my cholesterol five points by eating cheer. <laughs> Tells his boss at work. What's in the well comes up in the bucket. Is that a better Texas phrase for you? What we're stewing on is going to come out somewhere, isn't it? So if we are being filled with Christ, it's going to come out and affect people around us in a genuine way. Whether we've got our act totally together or not, right? We preserve people's eternity. When we are, it just comes out. You can't help it. You ever been into something and it's a hobby? And it, have you ever been anybody does CrossFit? If you have, you know about it because they talk about it all the time. <laughs> I was flipping some tires yesterday. <laughs> now I'm jacked. <laughs> I do CrossFit. Got me a sledgehammer. And I pick it up and I swing it. And I hit that same tire. And now I'm Jack. <laughs> I do CrossFit. I was doing exercise. If you didn't know it, I got a bumper sticker on the back of my truck. CrossFit. You know what I'm talking about now? People, yeah. If people are into something, it's going to come out, right? That's probably why I use a lot of television references because my parents didn't spend a lot of time with me. They just sat me in front of the TV and said, here, watch Fonzie. We'll be in the other room. It's going to come out, right? So if we have Jesus all in us, it's going to come out. And it's going to help preserve people's eternity. That's what salt does. Salt purifies. In an impure world, we're an agent of purification. That's what we're meant to do. We, God says, you're the salt of the earth. You help purify you ever watched Lord of the Flies or, or read the book? Amen. Where a bunch of kids are just left in it. What was that show? Kelly, I'm sorry to call you a middle church. I know you hate this. <laughs> but we watched it a few years ago. It was a reality show. Kid Nation. Thank you. I did can't do it myself. I just had to look at you. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like Lord of the Flies. It was called Kid Nation. And they filmed up. It's probably child abuse, to tell you the truth. They turned all these kids loose to themselves in a town and filled them. And they had to provide for themselves. And, and uh, they formed their own community and stuff. Right? 
Yeah, you're, Lord of the Flies is kind of the same way where all these kids have no supervision and they're just left to themselves. And what happens when we're left to themselves? Can you imagine our world, what it would be in if the presence of Christ was removed from our world? Do you really stop and think about it? Now, I don't want to knock other places, but man, I've been to New Orleans a couple of times, got peed on in New Orleans. <laughs> if you guys can hear that, good. <laughs> but yeah, we were down, on, we went to the Sugar Bowl to watch my beloved Ohio State Buckeyes beat Alabama. And, I'm sorry. That dude's like, I'm glad you got peed on that. <laughs> but we were going down Burger Street and I was like, Something hit me in off the balcony. He's like, oh, I hope that was someone's beer. <laughs> and my brother was like, no. <laughs> but that town has just a creepy, weird vibe to it. And it just, it just does. I, I felt a, a weird heaviness. And I think, what would our world be like if God's presence was just removed, it would be Lord of the Flies, wouldn't it? You saw the gas panic of Op 17, right? Yeah. It's going to go down in history as, as, it didn't take much, right? Our world, we are purifiers of our world. We're salt. Salt purifies. We're to be out there doing that. Salt creates thirst, doesn't it? If we're the salt of the earth, we're supposed to be Making people thirsty for more Christ. That's right. One of my favorite television shows, I probably watch it way too much, is Cheers. I just like it. It's like my grandpa with MASH. He just loves MASH. That's my MASH. I love Cheers. It just makes me laugh. And it's set in a bar. And you don't notice it, but every week there's, they're talking about chips and peanuts and pretzels. I remember going to a bar with my dad when I was a kid after softball, and I ate pretzels until I was sick. They were free. <laughs> <laughs> they had them as much as you could eat. Free bowls of pretzels. Set me up. I became a pretzel holic at that, at that bar. Why do they put those things out? It makes you thirsty, right? It makes you want to buy beverages. It's an investment in what they're selling. Salt makes us thirsty. As Christ followers, if we're the salt of the earth, we need to be making people thirsty for Jesus. They need to see something in you and say, I need that. I'm different. I, don't, I can't rightly put my finger on it, but there, there's something about them that I'm missing in my life. They did not react the way someone else I know react. You, my daughter's been down in Houston this week helping, did I say it right? Houston, I, I don't say my H's right when, when I say Houston. Leave me alone. <laughs> been down south, helping with some recovery with her school. And it's night and day between someone who knows the Lord and loses everything and someone who doesn't when everything that they have is really, that's all they have. Does that make sense? We're to, we're, that's, that's, that's Holy Spirit living in you. That creates thirst. Salt melts things, doesn't it? It melts ice. When I lived up north in Illinois in the frozen tundra, we used a lot of a lot of salt, and the pastor used me as a snowplow. <laughs> Katie's laughing because she's salt. It snowed. He said, "Hey, I need to get those lines uh, in the parking lot. We had a big parking lot, and so I was out there on Sunday morning trying to find the, the stripes so people could see how to park." I didn't praise the Lord a lot. <laughs> For real. It was Sunday and I had to teach kids and stuff. And I, I, by the end of the day, I was mad at them. Man, I'm going to pay somebody to come do this. Get a snowplow. 
Nobody knows no pup. Chris, we got you. You're in your 20s. <laughs> the salt melts things. You ever slipped on the ice? It hurts, doesn't it? You think you got it? Whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh, man, I love watching videos of people fall. Same. I do. When Kelly and I, were we married or just dating? Hopefully we're married. If we were dating, you'd probably left me. But we were at Arby's. It was before uh, cell phones and stuff, so she wouldn't have to use the pay phone. And it was icy, and they didn't put salt out. And I was ordering. And she went outside to use the pay phone. And I see, bam! And a good husband would have said, hold on. I'll finish my order in a minute. My bride has fallen. <laughs> a rookie husband says, I'll take cheese sticks and that. <laughs> she's like, she probably, she's laughing now, but inside she's, so she's dumping. <laughs> but you guys have a couch. <laughs> but salt melts things, right? Melts snails too. <laughs> That's true. Gross. But don't people need their heart to melt for Jesus? When we get, when all you know is a sinful life and people that are that don't know Jesus, that act like they don't know Jesus, does that make sense? Bad things happen. And you become like the Grinch at Christmas. And your heart gets hard. And you get cynical. And you get jaded. And when you see true love, you don't even know how to take it. You think, well, what's it? They're, they're after something. They invite me to church. They, they just want my money. They invite me to church and they just, they just, they just want me to watch their kids. Right? When, and that's, that's expected. When that's all you know, I, I get it. But when you see someone's heart start melting for Jesus, man, what a beautiful if you've ever had the opportunity to lead someone to the Lord, you know what I'm talking about. To see that light come on and they say, hey, I get it. I need Jesus. And to see that goofy grin on someone's face after they accept the Lord because they feel like the weight has been, of the world has been lifted off their shoulders. We're to be salt that helps melt people's hearts. You know what? Salt heals as well, doesn't it? I got this scar. It looks like I am struggling with hurting myself, but I'm just stupid. <laughs> uh, we were about to go on vacation, and I had a grill outside the house, and my dog Kramer. Kramer was a cool dog. He, we named him Kramer because when he was a puppy, he would walk in the room and go, oh, like that, like, <laughs> like Kramer, and he'd fall down. He's a good dog, and he loved me. I loved him. But he always was under my feet. And I went outside to, to go do something before we left to go on vacation. And I tripped over that dog and landed on the grill, and I cut my wrist right there. I got that little bit scar there. And it, it was kind of gross for a while. And I, we were going, it was right before your grandmother passed away, we went, I did my scuba diving test in Possum Kingdom Lake. And then, you know, taking a big bloody wound and then diving into Possum Kingdom Lake. I don't know if that's the best thing for it. Yeah. But I just had it wrapped up with gauze and then had to my dive watch over it. No one really saw it because I didn't want people to think, is everything okay in your life, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> but then, about a week later, we got to go to the Cayman Islands with Kelly's parents. For real, don't feel sorry for me. Sorry. I'm not asking for your pity. Just your jealousy. 
But we got to go diving in Canaan in the salt water. <laughs> and it hurt, but it, it healed that thing up fast. Being under pressure in that salt water helped heal the properties of that salt water helped heal the wound. Salt helps heal. Amen. There's a lot to it. When Jesus says, hey, you're the salt of the earth. <coughs> he's saying a big statement, isn't he? You are a big deal. You're the salt of the earth. He says, you are the light of the world. <coughs> you ever been in a really dark room? Trent, will you turn all our lights off? Will you turn the spotlight off and the blue lights off? All right, now look around. There's still some light in here, but you know, you notice the, where the door's not sealed up real well down at the bottom there. And back there in the back right, my right, your left, back there. And you see the light coming through the crack in the door there and the... the Computer, all right, you can turn it back on. Thank you. Still here. Would have been awesome if you all had a square. But right when, there, when it, you're surrounded by darkness, just that little bit of light you look for. And it makes a huge difference, doesn't it? The Bible says we're the light of the world. We live in a dark world. You're to be the light. He said, why do you put, in, the, in this time when Jesus is talking, it was hard to get, you know, it's not like you had Zippo lighters. You had to do a little work to light your candle, didn't you? And so people would put lamps over them with a little hole so the candle would keep burning. Then they would take that, that off at night and Christ says, hey, what, don't do that. Don't cover your light. Don't cover your light. Let your light shine. That's what we're to be. A ray of light in a dark world. Let your light shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Right? I think of Paul. Let's turn to Acts real quick. And we're almost done. Acts chapter 16. Verses 20... Trent, what do I have up there? 22 through 22? 31. All right, 22 through 31. This is Paul as he's preaching. It says, A mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas, and the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. They were severely beaten, and they were thrown in prison, and the jailer ordered them I'm sorry, and the jailer ordered to make sure that they, they did not escape. So the jailer put them in the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. That's a bad day, isn't it? Be beaten naked, then thrown in a dungeon and put in the stocks. And around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundation. All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. Wouldn't that have been a sight to see? Don't fail me now. <laughs> the jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He's, he assumed the prisoners had escaped. So he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, Stop! Don't kill yourself. We're all here. The jailer called for the lights and ran into the dungeon and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved along with everyone in your household. And they shared the word of the Lord with him and all who lived in his household. 
Paul and Silas did not deserve what was happening to them. But they had a supernatural power living in them, which was Jesus Christ. God, in the form of Holy Spirit, living in them, that caused them to behave differently. And when they behaved differently, guess what happened? It attracted, it attracts people. Doesn't it? We need to let our light shine. Don't let our light get blown out. Because you live in a world that is a hurricane trying to blow your light out. <coughs> Two reasons. We hide it. Because we're ashamed. Or Satan beats you up and blows it out. And it, and it can happen to anybody. It can happen to me. It can happen to you. That's partly why God gives us church family. For iron to sharpen iron. And for us to encourage each other when we're down. To keep that light lit. Let's go back to the beginning. What would happen if God's presence was removed from the world? Would you want to be there? So if God says we're the salt and the light, we're to be used to change lives. Aren't we? Don't put so much pressure on yourself to think, oh man, i got to change everybody's life around. God says, I made you the way I made you. All of your experiences, good and bad, are made up of who you are. I want you to genuinely pursue me, and then you will genuinely draw people to me. Whether you've got it all figured out or not. I will take that bad situation that has happened to you and use it for good. I will take that hurt that you feel and help heal it. So in turn, you can live it out in front of someone else. Let's be salt. Let's be light. When you know who you are, church, what is it? You know what to do. So this week, last week we talked about it. When Satan tells you lies, we're to take every thought captive, aren't we, and hold it to submission of Christ. Is this true? God, am I, well, am I no good? I feel no good. Is that true? No. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. God makes no jump. That's what's true. Who do you say I am? You say I am salt and I am light. So when I go to work today, even though I don't feel like going to work today, even though I've got a thousand problems, I'm going to be salt and I'm going to be light. Because guess what? God's going to put someone in your path that needs you. The job that you have, the, the friends that you have, are all on purpose. It's not a mistake. So... You have divine appointments. And just as much as you're doing that for someone, someone's going to be doing that for you. So be looking for it. Can you do that, church? With every head bowed, every eye closed. I dare say today that some of you don't feel like you are capable of doing what God says you're capable of. That you are salt and that you are light. That you are salt and that you are light. And that you are valuable. You don't feel that way. I've heard it said this way. Do what's right and let feelings catch up. A lot of days I don't feel... God, to tell you the truth, Sunday is more than not. That doesn't change the fact that Christ loves me. And it doesn't change the fact that I'm to be 
salt, and light. So if you're here today and you say, Chris, that's, I, I totally get that. And I want to be more of what God says I should be. Will you pray that I'll be more mindful of that? If that's you today, just quickly with your hands up and down. Thank you. Thank you. If you're here today, I would not be your friend if I didn't tell you, first of all, all that stuff is impossible unless you know Jesus. Without Him, you're not salt. You're not light. You're part of the darkness. God loves you enough, I'm going to let you sit there. Send his son to be a sacrifice. In fact, if today you have never done that, please do it. If you don't know today that you know the Lord, you can come during this time of music and say, hey, I, I'm sure I don't, I don't really know. I want to figure it out. You can come to church your whole life and miss knowing the Lord. 12 inches, the distance from your brain to the distance of your heart. Because you have an academic knowledge of Him, but not a personal knowledge of Him. Coming to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than sitting in your garage makes you a car. It's what you do with that person of Jesus Christ. If you would, stand with me. I'd like to pray for you. And this is our time of invitation where we invite you to do business with God. You can do it right where you're sitting or you can come to this altar. But if you come to church today and leave the exact same way that you came in, then you're robbing yourself. Father, we love you. God, as we now worship you through our time of invitation, I ask that uh, for those in here that just as myself needed to be reminded that we are salt and light to a dark world, thank you for choosing to use us. You could write your name in the sky or have a huge earthquake like we read here in your word.
Amen. Amen. A couple of things as we're dismissed. Katie, what time are you guys meeting here to leave to go to the ladies' retreat? We're meeting here probably Thanks for watching.